Microsoft just released their Surface Pro 8, which is an amazing machine, but can it stack up to Apple's iPad Pro with the M1 chip? So today, we will compare every single difference and see which one of these devices you should buy. We're gonna take a look at everything from the display, the webcam, the microphones, the keyboard covers, using the pens with them, CPU and graphics performance, prices, and more. Right off of the bat, I could tell that this Surface is a lot heavier. Even though the sizes are fairly similar, it is thicker and it is packing a lot, including a fan inside of this machine. It has vents all along here for our airflow, and then of course, it has Microsoft's little kickstand cover. So even without a keyboard cover or a case, you can adjust it if you want a nice angle for drawing, watching movies, stuff like that. Whereas the iPad, you have to buy their accessory. As far as ports, Microsoft definitely has Apple beat. Instead of having one Thunderbolt port on the bottom, which was amazing for the M1, we have two Thunderbolt ports on one side, plus we have Microsoft Surface connector for charging, for using docks and things like that. And on the other side, we still have a headphone jack, which you don't get on the iPad Pro. And not only that, there is another secret underneath this kickstand. You guys can see that there's a little slot right here. And what that slot is, you can actually open it up and you can upgrade the SSD later down the line. So unlike the iPad Pro, if you didn't buy enough capacity out of the get-go, you are not stuck. You can actually upgrade it, which is amazing. Now we also have some major camera differences. Both of them do have cameras on the back and the Surface has a 10 megapixel camera compared to, look at that module on the iPad Pro, which also has an ultra wide. Now here are some shot differences with the rear cameras. Um, it looks pretty noticeable when I took the images. You guys let me know your thoughts down below. And then of course you can also shoot ultra wide. So here is that sample. Now on the front, both of these do have uh, cameras. The iPad is oriented in a portrait mode, just like a standard iPad. And here are a couple sample images between between them, the Surface only has a five megapixel camera, whereas our iPad has that center stage feature, which it's cropping in when it's just me, and then Vadim is gonna go ahead and enter the frame. Hey, and then now, bam, hey. you guys can see right there. Hey, you guys it better subscribe right now. <laughs> Trying to hit a go bill. ultra wide, and then Vadim is gonna step out. Bam, it zoomed back in. So that part of it is great. And then of course, with that, if you wanna take some ultra wide shots, check this out. Bam, look at that, that is insane. You have that ultra wide capability. Now we're also gonna compare the microphone quality and the webcam use in just a bit, but first let's go ahead and bust out the keyboards. Microsoft has a new keyboard which has a slot for their pen that can actually magnetically charge the pen. It'll attach it and charge it, which is great. It also connects the same way as before. Whereas with Apple, we have this magic keyboard. Now, I know I mentioned that the prices were the same um, from the actual tablets themselves, but once you factor in the magic keyboard and the Apple Pencil, which attaches at the top, that's a big price difference. It costs 480 bucks for the Apple Pencil 2 and Apple's magic keyboard compared to 280 for Microsoft's premium signature cover with this Alcantara, which is really nice. And then with that pen that now features haptic feedback inside it as well. So you definitely save some money going with Microsoft's option. Now, as far as these keyboard covers themselves, I love how the Magic Keyboard has this hinge. So your screen floats, it's closer to you, you can adjust it. Um, and the overall feel, how sturdy it is. It's not gonna flop around if you're using it on your lap. With Microsoft's cover, it's a lot more floppy. You have a two-piece design where you have to have it you know, sitting on your lap where you have to adjust it separately. So it's not as nice, but I do like the fact that you can enclose the pen and hide it. And we'll take a look at pen performance in just a bit. Now, of course, that more expensive Magic Keyboard does also give you an extra USB Type-C port, which allows for pass-through charging and it frees up your other port. But with the Microsoft Surface Pro 8, you don't need that because you have those built in. Now, as far as the actual keyboards themselves, the Magic Keyboard is phenomenal. It feels fantastic. And the Surface Keyboard also is very, very good. Not as good, but no complaints. This thing feels fantastic for such a slim keyboard. And the same thing goes with the trackpads. Both are very good. The Magic 
Magic Keyboard's trackpad has an even feel all throughout, so I think it's a little bit better. The Surface Pro 8 signature keyboard has a slightly larger trackpad. It is a diving board design, so it's harder to click at the top, but overall still, it is an excellent trackpad that I cannot complain about. Now I wanna get rid of these keyboards because of just how differently they sit here. It's hard to record it and to make it look even, but before I do that, I wanna do two things. The first one is talk about how you log into these devices. The Surface Pro 8 does have Windows Hello, so it's gonna scan for my face and log me in. And the same thing with the iPad Pro. So you just swipe up or just hit the keyboard and it will unlock and log you in. Now Face ID is a lot more secure. You can use it for payments, for passwords, all sorts of things whereas the Windows Hello is mainly just for logging in. And for the second part, the microphone quality and the webcam quality or zoom quality, that's what we call it now. So with the Magic Keyboard attached, as you guys can see, I'm looking off to the side on the M1 iPad Pro. I actually have to look all the way down to the bottom left for that camera and it's very unnatural to look all the way there and then if you ever look at the screen to say maybe a document or something you're looking away it looks awkward now of course you could switch to the wider view from that wide front facing camera but it still looks kind of weird and off seeing it so large and you kind of looking off to the side if you look at the screen and here is the webcam and microphones with the surface pro 8 it has dual front facing microphones and a camera that's set up in the right spot like most laptops Top. So it's natural for me to look at that spot and then I can kind of glance down at the screen, look back up, and I think it's set up a lot better for web conferencing. But you guys let me know what was the difference in terms of video quality and microphone quality down in the comments section below. And now let's compare the speakers. The Surface Pro 8 has dual front facing speakers, one on each side, which is great. But the iPad Pro has some amazing speakers. We have quads, two on each side, which sound fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a listen to which one sounds better. <laughs> All right, guys, you let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I will just say that wasn't even a competition. Even though the iPad Pro doesn't sound its best when you're holding it up that way, and the speakers are on the sides, so they're not really bouncing off of anything or towards your face, it's way louder. Uh, the bass is better. It sounds better in every single way. These speakers are insane, even better than you know a lot of laptops and everything else. Where these, yeah, they do face you. They're loud enough, but you don't have that richness, that deep kind of sound of the bass and the mids. Uh, so overall, uh, definitely not as good as the iPad. And now let's compare the displays. And both of these have had massive upgrades from the previous generation. Now the iPad's a 12.9 inch compared to 13 inch for the Surface, but you guys can see they look different. The iPad is a four by three aspect ratio compared to three by two, so the Surface is wider. Now with that, as far as actual resolution and pixel density, both are very detailed and sharp, but because they both have about about five and a half million pixels and both of these are 120 hertz displays now what is interesting is that with uh, the surface I actually had to go in go into my advanced settings and change it to 120 Hertz because it defaulted to 60 to save battery life and that's because it cannot dynamically change like with ProMotion that you get with the iPad Pro now this will automatically match your content so if you're watching a video it'll scale down all the way to 24 Hertz that saves you battery life and we'll talk about battery life in just a bit I went ahead and I adjusted that top camera so we can look at the brightness and the iPad even though it has a really crazy bright uh, mini LED display um, as you can see it maxed out at 600 nits which is still nice and bright whereas the surface this thing will actually reach up to 500 nits of brightness so it's better than before quite a bit better but still not as bright as the iPad Pro now where the iPad Pro really comes into its own is with HDR content that's when it can reach a thousand nits sustained across the whole screen compared to 600 as you guys can see right here and up to 1600 nits with really bright peaks. So you guys see how that highlight right there on the iPad Pro pops out? Whereas the Surface Pro 8 just looks flat even though it's at 600 nits of brightness. Now not only that, that mini LED display 
has blacks that are almost pitch black, kind of like an OLED display. So we have much better contrast and brightness. And same thing with colors. We have DCI-P3 wide colors on the iPad compared to sRGB with the Surface Pro 8. So if you care about having the best display in terms of colors, contrast, uh, accuracy, it definitely is the iPad Pro. The same thing goes for reflectivity. Not only is the iPad a lot brighter, but the screen on the surface is a lot more reflective as you guys could see. It reflects everything, whereas the iPad has a really good non-reflectivity coating on it. So if you're using these outside, the iPad's a lot easier to use. Before we cover performance, let's talk about pens or pencils. The Apple Pencil is very nice. It's dense, it feels high quality, it supports tapping for gestures, and the Surface Pen feels very lightweight, feels hollow, the quality doesn't feel you know the same, but of course, that's just how it feels. The, what really matters is the performance. Now, the Apple Pencil, you guys know it performs great, very low latency, about nine milliseconds, Feels awesome to use it. Um, pressure sensitivity, all of that great stuff. You could tap to switch between, say, the eraser. So that part, no issues at all. Now with the Surface Pen, it was good before, but now it's even better because of that haptic feedback. So I can press on the button on the back, and I can use it to take a screenshot. I can press and hold to open up Microsoft's whiteboard, and of course, you can customize what it does. And it is nice to just have that tactile response when you are using it. Apple shocked the world, including us, when they put the M1 into the iPad Pro. So we have the M1 in here with eight gigs of RAM, whereas Microsoft has a full-on x86 Intel quad-core processor. This is the i5, also eight gigs of RAM. This has the best graphics as well, not the suckier graphics. So let's go ahead and start out with the CPU benchmark and we'll see how it compares. Now this does have power mode, so I did put it into the best performance so we can see what we get. All right, bam, we have our results and this is actually interesting. I was not expecting the Surface to get this high of a score, 5,116 and with that, I couldn't even hear the fans over our HVAC or the fan that is in there. So that is really good. But of course the M1, it prevails. We have 7,285, which is actually low. Usually it's higher than that. Uh, but that is about 43% more powerful. And it's, in terms of single core, 1,700 compared to 1,300. It's about a 25% difference. So the M1 is overkill for this tablet, especially when you get into software. But that was actually with this plugged in. So what I'm curious about is Microsoft really gonna limit this uh, tablet slash laptop all in one machine if you don't have power. Let's go ahead and run that again. All right, it's loading up. That seemed to take longer than the first time, so let's see. And bam, look at that. The score barely changed. Take that, all the other Windows laptop manufacturers that really limit your laptops when they're unplugged. When you have a set to maximum performance, this is what you should get. You should get the maximum performance. And now let's compare the graphics. We have the Iris XE graphics here. And then of course we have Apple's eight core M1 graphics in this machine. That is fantastic. So let's go ahead and compare. All right, we have our score here and it's a pretty significant difference. We have 20,792 for the M1 and then 13,281 for the Intel Iris XE graphics. 56% more performance with the iPad and that was to be expected. Now, of course, you can get better performance if you spend more money for the i7 option. Now, it will still not get close to the M1, but you can increase it if you wanna spend more money. Whereas with the iPad, you get the M1 chip even on the base model, you don't have to upgrade to get this maximum performance. And then now we get into the conversation of what does this performance give you? Well, to be honest with the M1, it is overkill, but that is future-proofing for a year, two years, three years, even five years down the line. Whereas with this device, the Surface Pro 8, you would want a little bit more performance. At least I would want a little bit more performance if you're using it as a pro device. And with that, we have to get into applications and their real world use cases. Because with the iPad, as many of you guys know that follow the channel, I made a lot of complaints about it in multiple different videos where the hardware is amazing, but the software has major downsides. And even though we have iPad OS 15, there are still lots of limitations with the file manager. Um, there's multitasking limitations. What you 
can you do at the same time? Music limitations, and then of course applications as far as the pro apps that can actually harness all of this performance that you guys just saw. Whereas with the Surface Pro 8, you have full Windows 11. So any application that you're currently using, if you're gonna upgrade to this, you're gonna get more performance than you had in the past without limitations and you get the better display, you get the better uh, pen support, you can do up, you can upgrade it. Um, so what is really the true pro device? Well, in my opinion, it is a Surface Pro 8. You have full Windows, full application support, whereas the iPad is still limited. And the only reason I say it's not really pro or not to the same level is just because of Apple. Apple is limiting this device. So overall, hardware wise, the iPad is better. It is the winner of this comparison in terms of hardware. You have that amazing display and you get way better battery life as well. You get eight to 10 hours of screen on time compared to in the real world, four to six hours, probably closer to the four, especially if you use 120 Hertz. Uh, but this thing is not locked down. You have extra ports, it's upgradable um, and less expensive if you factor in the keyboard and the pen. So that is my opinion, but I wanna hear your guys' opinion as well. Which one of these is the pro device? Which one would you buy? Which one do you prefer? Go ahead and check out one of those great videos over there. I'll link one of my iPad reviews and videos as well. Click that circle above to subscribe if you guys wanna help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,